Well, it's a good day to go out and identify twigs. <laughs> Deciduous trees in the wintertime without their leaves on, because the leaves have fallen. And uh, yeah, uh, when I worked in forestry, we did more work in the winter uh, than the summer. So we actually had to know our, our species in the winter, more so in the summer. It's just easier traveling in, in the woods in the wintertime. Okay, uh, first, before we start off, there's a few things to go over, uh, if I can find right here. When we look at twigs, the species we're gonna look at today, all maples and all ashes are opposite. And what do I mean by that? Let me get here. The branches are opposite to each other, okay? And like, for example, this is a maple, this is an ash, they're opposite to each other. If they're all alternate, meaning there's a branch here, another branch here, another branch here, then it's some other species. But if it's opposite, it's gotta be either, either an ash or a maple. So I'll do some close-ups here, but basically I'm gonna show you this one. This is a white ash, and I'll do a close-up for you. But you can identify it because, first of all, it's opposite, okay? It actually has a terminal bud uh, that looks to me like a horse's hoof. Some people think it looks like a Hershey Kiss, one of those uh, chocolates. And um, so it has that. It also has the lateral bud, which is the, the side bud. Uh, it actually is pretty close up to the terminal. Um, the the first, first one's down. It also has a shine to it, whereas black ash does not have a shine. It, sa it says in the textbook, it's a gun blue shine. Like, I, I guess a gun shines blue inside the barrel. Like, I'm not sure what you would be doing looking inside of a gun. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, so basically, Hershey Kiss or... Uh, um, uh, horse's hoof on top and lateral bud is suppressed up to the terminal. The other thing too is the lateral bud on the side has a little smiley face on it and that's where the leaf scar is. So the leaf scar is where the leaf was and then it pulled off and therefore there's a leaf scar. And you look at it, there's a little tiny smiley face on it. Cool. Maple. Two types of maple in this wood, woods. Uh, there's sugar maple and there's red maple. Sugar maple is a really hard, dense fiber. A wood is really good for burning. Red maple, not so much. Okay, so there's a big difference. In fact, red maple is almost like a bush than, 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 than a tree. The difference of, of it is that, first of all, it's opposite, right? But the, the uh, sugar maple has, I, I call it dunce hat. It has, oh, I think seven to eight or maybe seven to 10 scales on it. So it's a very sharp, uh, almost landslide bud. And then it's got two little terminal buds on the side almost like little horns and then it's kind of red at first but then turns goldy blonde brown all the way down when you look at a red maple it has a terminal bud but it's it's kind of pointy but dull like it's kind of it's not as sharp and doesn't look like a dunce hat um, it has the buds on the side as well but again dull or, or stunted or blunt maybe blunt is a better word and it's red the, the, the twig is red, so it's a red maple, okay? So that's a good way to tell. Two species so far. So right behind me is red maple, and uh, it's all around me. You can see the reddish color to the twig, uh, not like sugar maple at all. I'll do a close-up of the bud, but again, it's, it's stunted, no, blunt, blunted. <laughs> Then more, no, it's not sharp, sharp like the sugar maple. And yeah, it grows usually in wet areas. Uh, it likes its feet getting wet, its roots getting wet. And all around, it's almost like a whole bunch of bushes of them. So it grows up really quickly. If you cut it down, it just grows right, right back up again. Uh, yeah, it's a red maple. Cool, lots of species in here. Beautiful day, by the way. So this is the bark of a white ash tree, or black ash, I'm not sure, but no, no, white. And uh, see the diamonds? Really grooved bark, deep grooves in it, and diamond shaped. Typical bark of an ash tree, red ash. So this is a cherry tree, and uh, it's a small one. They don't go too big, but uh, yeah, worth a lot of money if you, you wanna make paddles and make cabinets and things like that. Uh, but anyway, so it's a beautiful, beautiful fiber wood. Burns really nice, smells really nice when it's burning too, but, the twig, yeah, I'll, I can show you the twig, but this is the giveaway. It looks like breakfast cereal, like cornflakes, okay? It's all shaped, shaped like that. And no other tree has that bark. When you bite into the sapling, uh, the twig, 
If it's white birch, it's gonna taste like wood. If it's yellow birch, which is similar, it's gonna taste like wintergreen. If it tastes terrible and you spit it out, it's a cherry. This is pretty much like finding gold when you're winter camping. Right here, that's a, that's a cherry tree. No, that's a, a dead cherry tree right beside it. Slice it off, chop it up. Man, you got a good burn. Fantastic. I wish it was staying the night. <laughs> Beauty. This is another nice find. This is a bur oak, similar to white oak. And how, like look at that bark, there's nothing else like it. It's just kind of distorted and soft too to touch. And uh, the branch looks like that as well. Oak have a cluster of buds at the tip. That's why deer love eating oak because if they chew off the tip, they get more than one bud for, for the bite, right? And red oak have a cluster of buds at the top that are red and pointy, like the devil. I don't know, that's how I remember it. And white has roundish buds that are whitish brown, not red. Bur oak looks like white oak, except it has this weird contortions in the bark. Uh, kind of like corky, it looks like a bunch of cork. And there's nothing else like this. Okay, so this is a basswood, and the bulb of the basswood looks like a huge Christmas tree bulb, like a red bulb. Big, huge bud, red, looks like a, a light bulb. And uh, yeah, it's alternate branch, so it's not opposite. And also, it's one of the softest woods. Like, you put your thumb in there, it feels like cork, okay? Really soft wood, not the best to burn. You see right here, this is the mother tree, and then it's spread it off, so it does, does do that. It's almost like a weed tree. It doesn't really go that, that big. And yeah, basswood. Right, so here's the bark of the basswood. Really known for getting subsucker holes all through it, like, like you see here. And kind of grayish, lightish gray. And again, just put your thumb in it, it feels like cork. And straighted lines down the bark. But the bud is a giveaway, that big red bulb, right? Here's another nice find uh, for wood. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Oh, okay, maybe not. I, I thought that was a sugar maple, uh, dead and standing up dry. That's what you want. You don't want it lying on the ground. But that's weird. I think that's a blue beech, which would not be good wood. And also, it's a rare species here. I'm uh, in the Corthus. This is a Carolina canna species. Maybe this is why they made it a conservation area here. Maybe because it's rare, rare blue beech. But anyway. Ooh. I can't tell because it's got no buds on it. I think it's a blue beach. Well, I don't know. The wood's pretty, pretty dense. No, no, that might be a maple. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have shown that one. Anyway, that would burn really well because it's standing up and it's dry. Okay, so this is a beach. And first off, it's a giveaway because beach hate giving away their leaves. So it's a very tight, uh, leaf scar or no leaf scar because they don't fall off. Supposedly in the old days settlers used to stuff their pillows and mattresses in the winter with beech leaves. I don't know. Uh, and the bark of a big tree is very obvious. It looks like an elephant leg and an elephant trunk. It's one of those things that you shouldn't do but a lot of people carve their names and I love whoever. Uh, yeah that, that's obvious but a sapling like this really obvious is the landslide skinny bud. It looks like a cigar. Actually, my, my students at risk think it, it, they say it looks like a joint. <laughs> anyway, um, and uh, so yeah, really blondish color as well. And nothing else like this. There are blue beaches here. The, the beach right behind me, you can tell, I don't know if you can see the, the bark, but it's not really obvious gray, light gray, like a, like a American beach. So they're blue beaches, really cool. And they do not have the bud like this. It's more of a stunted bud. I can't find any small ones here to show you the bud, but yeah, there's blue beaches here. That's really cool. And American beach as well. You know what you call a small little beach like this? A son of a beach. <laughs> now that is a blue beach. Very cool. So we have one of the three poplars are in here. There's trembling aspen, haven't found that yet, but there should be somewhere around here. There's balsam poplar, uh, and then there's large tooth aspen. And how you know, well, first of all, there's a big, huge one behind me, but uh, large tooth asp uh, aspen, uh, the main characteristic of the, of the twig is it's got white powder on it. 
and uh, like cut talcum powder, almost like grayish fine white hairs. And it's a giveaway. Uh, I don't know any other species that, that has that much uh, hair on it, like, like the large tooth aspen. And they're weed trees. So all the poplars uh, grow up to be 30, maybe 40 years old and then drop and then create soil for all the other species. So they don't last too long. Uh, they do have uh, ASA, like an, what's in an aspirin, in their inner bark. So if you ever have a headache, take the inner bark of any of them. Uh, except maybe balsam poplar, it tastes terrible. It's really pungent. And uh, make a tea out of it. Or even chew the bark. It will take your headache away. Does that mean that beavers never have a headache? Hmm. <laughs> so what we have here is an ironwood. And it's all... Uh, almost again like the breakfast cereal idea, but more stringy, okay? The bark just can't, comes off it. This is a bad example. It is using more pronounced than this, but it has the shaggy bark coming off it. This is a big ironwood. They usually grow only about this big. The settlers used to use them for axles, uh, hence the ironwood. Really dense wood. If you find a dry one of these, it's an all-nighter for sure. Your chainsaw will spark going into this, okay? So that's how dense the wood is. And, uh, I was told the other day that actually you can tell if there's lots of ironwood that it was a grazed area for cattle because cattle won't eat ironwood. So I don't know. And I think this was an old farm at one time. So ironwood, shaggly bark. And this is a big guy. I didn't think I'd find this guy in here. This is not a white birch, it's a yellow birch. It's kind of discolored yellow birch though. Man. Yeah, that's yellow birch. If I found a sapling around here, put it in your mouth, it tastes like wintergreen. Makes a really good tea. Uh, this bark, let me show you. This bark burns. It has resin in it, just like the white birch, but not as good as the white birch, I find. And don't rip the bark off the tree, okay? Because <laughs> you'll girdle the tree. I just want to show you how this burns. Okay, really good fire setter. But see, it's not burning as well as the white birch wood. Ah, it smells nice though. Okay, so this is obviously, well not obviously to everybody, but obviously to a lot of people, especially if you camp. Uh, this white birch, birch burns really well again because it has resin oil in it. Burns even when it's damp or wet. Uh, but when they're sapping, like the guy beside it, it doesn't have the birch bark. In fact, actually it's more reddish brown uh, color, really known for having its catkin still on the branch. Um, and yeah, you can go all into the, the bud, whatever, uh, what it looks like. It's blunt, it has uh, greenish to brown uh, scales on it. But the big thing is it has lenticels, those little white lines all the way uh, throughout it. And actually it helps the, the sapling breathe, but it looks like a salted pretzel. When you look at yellow birch, it doesn't have that many lenticels. The white birch has more. So that's how you tell the difference. And then right beside it, what looks like a white birch, <laughs> the, the buds are a little bit different. Oh, I can, oh God, you can tell right, as soon as I pull that branch off, it just, we're punching odor. And if you taste this, oh, that's cherry. <laughs> looks similar to birch, but taste it and you'll find out. It's not birch. So here's a white birch, and it's right beside the yellow birch. Cool. So the difference in color, golden, golden color to the yellow birch, more frayed bark, less looking like paper, just, just frayed edges. And then the white birch. Cool. This one tastes like wood. I can't find a sapling, or I taste it, but the saplings taste like wintergreen. Okay, so this is kind of cool. This is an elm. I didn't think I'd find them here, but uh, there is a farmer's field over there, so that kind of makes sense. And I'll see if I get a close-up of this bud, but it's, it's kind of hard to zoom lens to get that close, but I'll try. But giveaway, it's an elm. The terminal bud is canted. It's bent, all of them. So yeah, um, it's bent over like that, and that's a clear sign it's an elm. It, it also has a zigzag pattern in its, in its twig. Uh, 
Uh, it also has very small, slender uh, buds, but yeah, the top bud, <coughs> bent. It's a gnome. So this is black knot. It's a fungal infection, really well known to be on uh, cherry trees. And basically it it's, uh, grows around the stem. It can girdle the tree. It does, in one sense, clear the area out by killing off some of the saplings to make an area for more sun to get in to, for the more, more healthy cherry trees to come up. So it does have its function, but yeah, black knot, fungal infection, kills the sapling. Well, there's some twig ID features for you. Yeah, it takes time to identify, especially bark. You have to be in the woods quite a while. You can't just memorize it and hope for the best. It just takes a while. It's fun though, knowing your species, especially in winter, because you want to <laughs> find good wood to burn. So it's been very beneficial. And it's a lot of fun too. <laughs> okay, my hands are cold. Still a beautiful day though.